Hey guys, this is A-Bomb. Just wanted to make a quick little note for you. I really apologize for whatever reason the audio is just not working on the uh, the game capture there. So, uh, no audio on the game, but you're not really missing out on much because the game's terrible. If it was better, I would have worked harder to try to get it fixed, but uh, alas, no audio on the gameplay. So, enjoy anyways. Hey guys, this is A-Bomb from No Way In Team, your number one source for awesome. Thanks so much for checking things out. Welcome to my review of Medal of Honor Warfighter. This is the first of what we hope will be many opportunities for us to uh, look at, talk about, uh, commentate other games outside of the Call of Duty universe. Um, and we're not just planning just to do reviews. Uh, we're hoping to do, you know, tips and tricks videos, uh, strategies, you know, regular commentaries. You know, if you guys enjoy the games, we want to make sure that uh, we're bringing you content that involves them. Um, unfortunately, I thought Medal of Honor Warfighter was absolutely horrendous and uh, <laughs> will not be playing it beyond this review. So if you guys are into it, uh, I'd love to, I'd really actually love to know why uh, and your reasoning behind it because I, I thought it was absolutely atrocious um, and wish I could get the time spent uh, doing this review back and uh, doing other more important and more enjoyable things. Um, all that said, Medal of Honor. Uh, it actually has a very, very long history and one that actually uh, dates back to previous to uh, the Call of Duty series. Uh, back in the late 90s, early 2000s, when World War II was the absolute norm for AAA shooters, both those ga both the series started. Both franchises uh, had their roots uh, in the World War II genre. Um, Medal of Honor, I thought, was a great game. And the original Call of Duty as well, but they were, you know, they just, they presented things a little bit differently. It's almost like talking about, say, you know, like a movie, like Saving Private Ryan versus Band of Brothers. You could call Medal of Honor the, uh, the Saving Private Ryan um, game, and you could call Call of Duty the Band of Brothers game. You know, similar setting, similar scenario, but uh, just a different way of presenting it. Uh, but they were both excellent, uh, and things have obviously changed over the last decade. You know, Call of Duty has become this juggernaut. Uh, Middle of Honor has become kind of an afterthought and uh, whoop, stuck in a rock there. Always love that on a map. Um, and uh, yeah, so again, uh, you know, Call of Duty has become a juggernaut and Medal of Honor has become an afterthought. Now, uh, what's the reason for that? Who knows? Doesn't really matter. Uh, I, I admittedly missed the previous Medal of Honor game. And uh, but by all reports, it was mediocre. You know, they were trying to do things in a you know, say, modern warfare style. They were you know presenting it similarly. They were you know bringing in kill streaks. They weren't introducing them, copying them, um, and uh, you just you simply can't do it. And you know, a lot of people were looking at this game as uh, EA's answer to Call of Duty again, once again. Everything always gets compared to Call of Duty just because it's a shooter and it's military. You know, it doesn't it doesn't have to be Call of Duty. It doesn't have to beat Call of Duty. It has to be its own game. It has to stand on its own and do its own thing. And unfortunately, this game does a terrible job on all fronts. Even if you don't compare it to Call of Duty, it's not enjoyable. Uh, the the games are generally slow and uh, and frustratingly uh, you know tedious. Um, but I would say my biggest criticism is the uh, the player interaction with the environment. It's it's inconsistent. Um, I don't know if you can really see it in the in the video feed so much, but when you're playing it, it just felt off. Um, it felt like you were never anchored in place. You know, your 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 player character would just always have this subtle movement left and right. You know, you could be crouched in a single spot, and you'd still slightly be moving to the left or slightly to the right, and so or even shuddering back and forth, which is even more annoying. Um, and just it, it it didn't have a nice crisp feel to it. Um, you know the the controls were were mediocre. They they didn't respond quickly, uh, and that has a lot to do with the fact that the engine is just it's got too much going on for for the current generation of consoles. And I don't I don't blame Frostbite um, or Frostbite 2. I should say it's a you know I'm sure it's a great technology and it's going to work really well in the future. But uh, obviously you have to rein things in to make next gen technologies work with current gen hardware. And they just simply didn't do it. It doesn't consistently deliver these, you know, the 30 frames per second to allow a nice, smooth, uh, smooth interaction with the player and the environment. Um, you know, aiming was was really, really frustrating. I maxed out the the sensitivity and still felt like it was way too slow. Um, but and that would be okay if you could, you know, just a little bit of time. You can usually adjust to that. It's not a big deal. It's just you know, it's not what you're used to. Um, but unfortunately, it was inconsistently different. So. 
uh, you'd sometimes it'd be slightly slower, sometimes it'd be faster, and it didn't matter whether it was ADS or hip fire. It was just inconsistent, and that got incredibly frustrating. Um, this clip, what did work in the game? Uh, you know, some team play aspects did work. This clip here, I should have pointed it out a few moments ago, but uh, this is really fun and really immersive, you know, kind of moving together as a group, taking the objective, taking control of that area, and uh, and ending up, you know, we had to, you know, blow it up, um, and we managed to do it, and that was, that was a lot of fun, but um, unfortunately, those are few and far between, you know, with this, uh, rather than squads, there's uh, fire teams of two guys, so you've, you know, you've got this buddy spawn system, and uh, it's okay, you know, sometimes that gets you back into the action quicker because you're, you know, your buddy is, you know, behind cover or whatever, and you're able to jump in there and, you know, get, you know, get into the fight quicker than if you spawn back at your, uh, your main spawn. But uh, it also slowed things down on a lot of maps because you'd end up with these uh, fire teams that just had a, you know, a camper and uh, one guy that tried to move things along. Um, and in some cases, two guys that camped. It was basically whoever died, okay, don't move, don't move, I gotta, I'm going to spawn. Um, and obviously, I can't say for sure if that's what was happening, but that's definitely what it felt like. You know, there's times you get aggressive, you take a couple of guys out. Um, but the, uh, you know, there's a couple more pairs of guys, you know, and they're laying prone or crouched in a corner or whatever. They're just camping hard on a certain spot and uh, they're getting spawned on so um, you know you didn't get a whole lot of movement as far as you know flanking and being able to get uh, in and out of spots um, the other thing about it was the the map designs they're they're quite large which you know can be good uh, but unfortunately they're not every path is available to you you know you can only go certain places at certain times um, other, actually the hot spot uh, game type uh, which I will say was enjoyable um, did allow for you to uh, traverse the map more uh, more openly, you know, similar to Call of Duty, and like an, as an in a, it had an arena style, you know, like there's out, outer barriers, but everything within is totally open to you. Whereas uh, the uh, the game types, I can't remember exactly what it's called, but similar to Conquest, I apologize, I'll uh, try to throw it in the annotation there. Um, the the game type where you go from you know bomb site to bomb site to bomb site. Uh, works kind of like Battlefield in that there's only certain parts of the map that are you know you're able to go to at different times so every once in a while you'd come across this uh, leaving combat area pop up and uh, it just again that doesn't feel um, like it doesn't feel immersive here this is really frustrating the scope I slowed it down so that you can see when you bring it up there's this brief moment where it's which is black um, and uh, until you bring it right up, it doesn't open, it doesn't like allow you to see through. Now that might not seem like, you know, too much of a, you know, not much of a big deal. But when, you know, when you're already struggling with aiming, when the speed of the controls is already lacking, uh, that extra split second of, you know, l lack of vision makes it even harder to get on target. And I found that extremely annoying. I didn't use scoped weapons very much because of that, or at least this style of scope. Um, because uh, that that little lost visual drove me absolutely nuts at different times. So despite despite my displeasure with the iron sights for most weapons, I just used them anyways because it was uh, less invasive. Um, this is a good example right here in this clip of how the you know the sloppy controls lead to these goofy firefights, and I can only imagine uh, what <laughs> what the other guy's perspective was on this. Um, but uh, and there you can you can basically spam the melee. I just held down the button and you can swing your tomahawk over and over and over again. Here's another example of like, are, are you kidding me? What kind of firefight is this? Um, just it's just awkward. Uh, and then on top of that, that's CQB, so that was relatively short. But lots of the long range firefights, uh, you just it's really really hard to get on target and really hard to hit a guy enough times to bring him down from long range. Um, this this clip here was much faster paced than typical. This was totally not the norm. If this, you know, if, if you could get these types of firefights once or even twice around, it'd probably, you know, have a little more uh, action value for me. But unfortunately, uh, this is, does not happen very much. Guys are generally not this aggressive. And uh, while I would say those two guys weren't really, you know, bright in how they approached things, um, they were trying to move things along and, uh, you know, get forward. Um, here's another example of... Uh, of a little bit of teamwork that uh, you know came into play, and these are the things that work. This was immersive. You know, you get up, get a little bit of map control, and then wait for uh, wait for help to arrive, and that that did work. Um, but uh, yeah, then things like this pop up. Okay, yeah, trying to trying to flank, trying to get control. Oh, can't go there. Oh, yeah, no, can't go there. Get back out. Same thing. Um, 
these things just get tedious. You, you'd be right in the middle of a firefight and you'd have that happen to you pop up, you can't see, and you lose the firefight because you, you, know, you lost your visual. Um, and this was the most frustrating one of all. You know, uh, the objective uh, you know, was blown up. And get back to the combat area. Okay, well, that's the indicator right there. No, gratuitous death animation. Thank you, EA. So much fun. Absolutely love it. Um, yeah, <laughs> what can I say? I am absolutely just ripping through this, and I'm ripping the game. So if you enjoy it, I apologize. Uh, I'm, again, though, I have no idea why. Uh, the UI is also another thing that was frustratingly bad. You uh, you know, changing your bloat, oh, changing your player class, things like that uh, just did not work very well. Um, it wasn't intuitive. You couldn't do it between rounds. It just, it was goofy. It's just, you know, the same old, same old, and uh, the game should not have been released. Um, <laughs> so you can tell what I think about it. And here's my last point. If you look at the uh, the scoreboard there, you'll notice that uh, I'm two and three. Who cares? It's mediocre. But that was, game was over 15 minutes long. Uh, my team won. The top guy on our team had 10 kills. And I'm sorry, 15 minutes with uh, with 10 kills. It, it that's just it's not enough. It's you can't call a game a squad based you know shooter when uh, <laughs> there's just not that much shooting involved. Like two and three. I'll say, you know, maybe maybe there's a few, you know, d double the encounters. I'll say that there were five more encounters where, you know, neither neither of us killed each other. So what, a whopping 10 encounters in 15 minutes? Uh, that type of pacing is just too slow. Couldn't enjoy it. Uh, I can't recommend it. Um, I'm, you know, it's highly disappointing. Hopefully, uh, we'll have something else soon to uh, play alongside with Black Ops 2, which uh, we'll all hope and pray is as good as it looks. All right, guys. Um, there you have it. Medal of Honor Warfighter, unfortunately, not what uh, we would expect it to be, and uh, I would say don't pick it up. So, anyways, have a good one, and we'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, thanks again for watching the video, really appreciate it. If you're new to Noian Team, thanks to this Warfighter review, please uh, you know, click a like if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you really enjoyed it, and if you've never seen any of our other videos, then uh, definitely check out Black Friday, it's our Black Ops 2 countdown, we've got one on the left, one on the right there, and uh, another series we have going right now called Tell Me I'm Wrong, give that a listen, uh, you may have a good chuckle, and uh, let us know what you guys think of this. Do you want more reviews? Uh, do you want us to stick to Call of Duty? Let us know, we want to hear it. Alright, enjoy, have a good week.